All right, so this is just a quick overview of combinational logic. Um, in analog versus digital, we have two possible conditions, a digital signal and an analog. Um, digital, there were only two possible values. Analog, there's continuous variation. This shows a type of analog signal, not necessarily the only type. Remember that digital is based on binary, where there are only two possible states. Logic zero, which would be false or off or low or no or an open switch. Logic one, which would be true or on or high or yes or a closed switch. So there are different kinds of logic. There's combinational logic and there's sequential logic. We have to get through combinational logic first before then we can begin to add on memory elements like flip-flops. So this is the general form for all logic gates, okay, there'll be inputs, some kind of shape, a rectangle represented here, that's the logic symbol, and then the output. Um, the truth table will have the inputs listed in the first two columns and then the outputs. And the number of lines there are depend on how many inputs there are. Here you see examples for two input truth tables and three input truth tables. The last column, Z, in both cases is the output. And uh, notice that the rows, the inputs are counting in binary. In the one that has X, Y, Z, you see we have zero, zero as the inputs. That's binary zero, right? And then zero, one, that's one, one, zero, that's two, one, one, that's three. So this is the AND gate. Um, its general number is a 7408. All right, there are other numbers in the middle and the end. Those have different meanings, okay? And we can write it Z equals X, a multiply Y, X dot Y, or just together X and Y. And we say this X and Y, all right? So if it was A and B, we'd say A and B. So the output on this one, Z in this case, is only one when both of them are one. It's an AND gate. They both have to be on for it to come on. All right. The OR gate, we write with a plus and we say this X OR Y, X OR Y, and it comes on whenever either one of them comes on. This is an inverter gate and we sometimes call it a knot, N-O-T, knot, and it is a triangle with the dot on the end, the little circle bubble. Um, it's the general number 7404, all right? So um, be sure to note that it is basically an opposite. It's an undo, all right? And we frequently do call it the knot gate. These typically come in IC packages. Um, and you'll get lots of information about those from other places. ICs come in a variety of packages. We generally use in class the 7400 series. All right, logic levels. In between 3.5 volts and 1.5 volts, they don't work very well. Okay, so you really wanna make sure you've got a good strong signal of greater than 3.5 for on and less than. There are a variety of things that'll cause a problem there, but you'll need to be aware of those, okay? Um, so the reason we call things AOI logic is because it's made with an AND, an OR, or an inverter. And it's just one type of combinational logic, AOI logic. So AOI stands for AND, OR, or inverter, all right? And so it's those three symbols. You need to be good with recognizing them and with sketching them quickly um, and you also need to know AND is 7408, OR is 7432, and INVERT is 7404. Those are ones you need to commit to memory. All right, I'm just going to go over a quick example here of the kind of logic design we could do. So a safety buzzer in a car might look something like this. The buzzer is on whenever the door is open, or the key is in the ignition and the seat belt is not buckled. So when we look at that, we have a couple of reasons to turn the buzzer on. The buzzer's the output, okay? So the door is open. We're going to turn it on. Or 
we have two things together the keys in the ignition and the seat belts not buckled all right so i did my inputs and i labeled them seat belt key and door all right so zero 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 all right is the first line that's zero then one then two then three then four then five then six then seven we always start with zero and we always end with ones all the way across whatever that is all right so whenever the door is open so we need to go through and put a one everywhere that the door is open so everywhere door is one buzzer will be one and then the other piece we'll need to do is every time the key is in the ignition we need to look and see if the seat belt is not buckled all right so for the seat belt we say zero is the seat belt is not buckled for the key zero is the key is not in the ignition for the door zero is the door is not open and of course zero is the buzzer is off all right so where do we have a one we turn it on everywhere the door is open so here 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 and here all right then the other case we want is when the key is in the ignition so let's look where the key is in the ignition okay here it is and the seat belt is not buckled so the key is one and the seat belt is zero we want the buzzer to come on so let's look and see if there's another case key seat belt yes but that one's already a one so key all right and nope the seat belt's buckled the seat belt's buckled so we leave that so we have five one two three four five cases where the buzzer's going to come on and so then we would make a circuit to integrate that so at this point you're going to not necessarily um, understand how to create this but let me just show you what this looks like um, this is a switch we use a switch to represent each one of the inputs this is the seat belt the key the door um, each switch we've run to ground and to power five volts and then we have the gates this is our not this is our and this is our or we've combined those and we've used this probe um, to represent our buzzer and it would come on in our circuit in our simulation anytime the buzzer came on and the correct logic was uh, met so this is a little intro to combinational logic